Hello everyone, welcome to my physical Dorum guide. Dorums are my favorite class in the game and they are powerful and have lots of great skills. This guide will help you know what to do from a witch to a spirit whisperer in Ragnarok Mobile 2.0. I've split this guide into two parts, and this video will cover attributes, skills, ruins, advanced ruins, guild prayers and blessings, guild facilities, deposits, and oracle mirror. In the second part, we'll cover pets, gear, gear fourth and chance, farming, multi-class, and damage tests. In this guide, I'll be showing three accounts. My free-to-play Dorum account, which I made before Ragnarok 2.0, a free-to-play Dorum made in Ragnarok 2.0 that was accelerated to level 120, and my main account, which I've spent money on. My free-to-play account will show new people the power of Dorum without all the hidden damage that comes from adventure book deposits, multi-class bonuses, and almost two years of playing seriously. I had followed Miss Maven's two Dorum guides when I first started Dorum. It's a great guide and although there will be some overlap, there are things here that I'll cover that aren't in those videos, including progressive equipment building and all the new features that came out in Episode 7, 7.5, and Ragnarok Mobile 2.0. See the description for the links to our two videos I followed. Also, when I first started Dorum, I got a lot of help from my friends over at Bunny. One resource I used a lot was a written guide from Smots, who transcribed and organized a Dorum guide based on Miss Maven's videos. I'll post a link in the description. Having a written guide is great for quickly looking up information, and I've used this many times. Let's look at attributes first. Physical Dorum is ranged, so the more decks you add, the higher the damage. I would suggest you spend as many points in a dex when you're a witch to a summoner. Once you hit Spirit Summoner, you can start to invest in Vitality because Life Soul gives you more damage based on your total HP. I always thought it was unfair that you can give Dorums a lot of survivability without sacrificing damage. You can keep investing in Vitality until it is maxed. Once you've maxed out your Vitality, then resume Dex. If you're lucky enough to get the third line, Life Burst Ruin, Agility adds to the chance to critical, which does 1.5 extra damage to your main two skills. At this point, the recommendation is to keep Vitality max and balance out your Agility and Dexterity. I want my Agility higher than my Dexterity, but at a certain point it costs so much for an extra point of Agility that I'd rather add more damage. This is what I use on my Dorum. Once you've finished all your 4th job skill breakthroughs as a Spirit Whisperer and get the extra 300 points, invest it both into Dexterity and Agility. This is my final point allocation. Be sure to get to Adventure Class C so you can get your MERS. I save an entry where my attributes haven't been allocated, but everything else is. That way, I can reload and tweak these attributes as needed. There are attribute reset items, but these cost 500,000 zenny each. You get a few of these for free, but it's definitely better to still be able to reload and play around with it. In Ragnarok Mobile 2.0, they added 10 more levels, putting the max level at 170. I would continue distributing my attributes between Dex and Agility as I continue to level up. Next up is Skills. This is a build I recommend for PvE and farming. People may get confused as to why we're investing in the green magic line for a physical Dorum. The reason is the Meowgrass skill, which grants an incredible 30% ignore defense and ignore magic defense when the enemy gets in that area. It's a fantastic buff for a party or for yourself, but requires skills to be invested in that magic line, which skills are colored green. One great quality of life change they did in Ragnarok Mobile 2.0 is giving everyone 5 auto attack slots to start and the skill play dead. Previously, you'd only have 2 auto attack slots and you'd have to do a quest to get play dead. Let's start with Witch. The first priority is level 10 Soul Bead, level 10 Soul Strike, then level 5 Stealth, level 10 Stoop, level 5 Jump. You'll always need Soul Bead skill and Soul Strike passive skill for your Dorum as it adds more damage. Your auto attack will be your auto attack wand skill. Early on, do the story mode to gain EXP and to get the spiritualist as soon as possible. Auto attacks are magic, so decks won't add to that, but just suffer through it for a little bit. Next up is spiritualist. Get level 10 picky pack, level 5 curled beetle charge, level 3 fresh swamp, level 10 shrimp swamp, level 5 meow crowd, level 3 toro trauma, level 3 kiwi stock gun, and level 1 kiwi root stock twining. Let's take a look at these skills. Picky Pack is a quick attack with low cooldown. It's just a temporary damage skill that you use until you become a summoner. It has a lower cast delay than Toro Trauma, so I use this instead. 
Next is Meow Crowd. If you have cats in your party, including mercenary cats, it adds to your HP even if they're expired. That's up to 20% extra HP, which is so broken. Next is Curled Beetle Charge. The more agility is always better, so I also use this late game because I had the life burst rune. Next is Shrimp Swamp. This just adds extra damage, and I do use this late game as well. Your auto attack will be the Picky Peck, Curled Beetle Charge, Shrimp Swamp, and Play Dead. Next up is Summoner. Get level 10 Lunatic Ground Pound, level 10 Life Power, level 1 Night Vision, level 5 Cat Sight, and level 5 Hiss. Then go back to Spiritualist Skill and add one more point to the Catnip Meteor. Then get Cat Min Powder to level 5 and Earth Power to level 3. Once you hit the breakthrough as a summoner, let's invest additional points to keep boosting our important skills. First get level 15 Lunatic Ground Pound, then level 20 Life Power, then level 20 Soul Bead, and finally level 10 Curled Beetle Charge. Let's take a look at these skills. Lunatic Ground Pound is one of your main AoEs and it is convertible with elemental converters. This is insane because most AoE is elemental locked. Next is Life Power. This gives you more HP, so that'll give you more damage later. Next is Cat Sight. You get 10% ignore defense through this passive skill. Your auto attack will be Lunatic Ground Pound, Soul Bead, Shrimp Swamp, and Play Dead. Even if you have the third line for Life Burst, you shouldn't rely on this for farming, so I don't put Curled Beetle Charge in my auto attack. Now let's look at Spirit Summoner. First get level 1 Formidable Meow, then level 1 Savage Soul, then get level 20 Life Soul. Then go back to maxing level 10 Savage Soul. Finally, level 1 Dried Lifesaver Fish. Then level 10 Earth Power. Then level 5 Meow Meow. Level 5 Meow. And then get level 10 Meow Cross. And then you can put 1 point into Tuna Steak. If you prefer to heal more, you can take out some points from Meowgrass and put it into Tuna Steak. For example, you can still have level 5 Meowgrass and still have 30% ignore defense. You're going to have quite a lot of skills now, so you might want to consider getting to Adventure Class B and unlocking Prepare for Elite. You'll be able to put multiple skills in there and save you slots on your auto attack bar. Your auto attack will be Lunatic Ground Pound, Savage Soul, Soul Bead, Shrimp Swamp, and Play Dead. You can also include Lunatic Gunner, which you can get from Ruins. Ideally, your Lunatic Gunner one-shots monsters when farming, so you don't end up getting stunned by partially killed monsters. You can remove Soul Bead if you need to free up some slots. Let's go through these skills. First, Savage Soul, as if Lunatic Care Pound wasn't enough to give us another convertible AoE. Then there's Life Soul, which is what I think makes Dorum super broken. The more HP you have, the higher your damage. Then we have Meowgrass, which gives us that amazing ignore defense whenever there's monsters on top of it. Dried Lightsaber Fish is an incredible skill as it allows you to cheat death. If you know you're about to die or hit something that reflects damage to you, then use this skill right away and you'll be able to survive. Once you hit job level 60, you're forced to invest in Force Focus, but this is a great passive skill since you get more HP. Lastly is Spirit Whisperer. When you go to your 4th job, you also get a huge life boost. Before I hit 4th job, I had looked at other dorms and wondered how they had such high health. I was around 650,000 HP before. After, I was able to go up by more than 100,000 HP. Your auto attack will be the exact same as a Spirit Summoner, as most of these things are passive. Focus on these three things first as they'll make you stronger, especially for PvE content. First, max out Concentric Life. There's a chance to deal double damage from your cat clone. This is a really insane skill and it's great for PvE and farming. Next, max Cat Transformation. You'll be able to revive teammates, so it'll feel just like a priest, which is pretty insane that they'd give them this type of utility. Then max out Concentric Sea Spirit, as you'll have more damage reduction. Next, I went to max out Natural Rage. This will give you faster Lunatic Gunner speed. If you happen to do PvP, then you can do Shark Fellow and Dolan Trick as those are pretty useful skills. This is my skill setup when I'm not doing farming and I'm doing PvE content like Endless Tower, Oracle, or MVP Hunting. On auto attack, I have Savage Soul and Lunatic Carrot Pound. I don't want any other skills here because I want to deal damage right away. If I need to quickly take down a boss while competing with other people, I don't want to put down Lunatic Carrot Pound which will do less damage or waste time casting Prepare for Elite when I'm right in front of the boss. I keep those skills in my manual skill slot so I can cast that whenever I need to. I only cast Lunatic Carrot Pound and the Meowgrass when I'm already engaging with the boss. If I know I'll be dealing with a monster that will reflect damage such as Cobalt Leader or a monster that can insta kill you like Fire Lord Kaho, I'll manually cast Dread Life Saver Fish to ensure I don't die right away. Next, we have Ruins. I will quickly go through the priority order of the runes I found most useful. 
These will help support skills you mainly use and make you do more damage. For the tier 1 to 2 monument, focus on getting Soul Strike Penetration, Lunatic Carrot Pound Effect, Curled Beetle Charge Agility, Dex, and Ignore Defense. Next, for the tier 3 monument, focus on getting Life Soul Limit, Savage Soul Effect, Lunatic Gunner 1 to 5, Max HP Percentage, Vitality, Dex, Ignore Defense, and Shrimp Swamp Attack. With any spare contribution you have, you should use it towards filling out HP and attack nodes. Next is Advanced Ruins. Pray that you will get the Life Burst Third Line Rune. Even if you don't have this rune, you still will do a lot of damage. However, if you want to do the crazy amount of damage you see in many YouTube videos, you definitely need this Third Line Rune. Each week, just keep buying runes from the Ruin Shop in Frontera and keep doing things that will give you runes as a reward. Eventually, you'll get it. You can also keep trying to roll for it using Precision Smelting, where you sacrifice 5 S ruins to get one for your class. And also, if you have 3 Life Burst runes that don't have the third line, you can attempt a reroll with Attribute Synergy. I wish you luck. There used to only be 3 nodes that you could use for advanced runes, but now there are so many that you have a lot of choices. Here's my priority list. First, get Life Burst Rune, 3rd line. There is a 12% chance to get it. Next is the Mail Hunter S Rune, which is great for farming since it resets your skill cooldown. I don't farm anymore with my Dorum, so I swap this out for another rune. Next is the Seafood Pond Rune. This is a great party buff, as it's able to increase damage to everyone who stands in that circle. Next is the Savage Assault A Rune. This gives you great damage and also decreases the cooldown time. Next is the Buggy Quick Strike, which gives you some easy agility. Next is Fresh Tuna. This is a nice emergency heal for yourself if you happen to have the third line. This isn't a critical one though, but it's still very nice to have. There's the Life Bond Star Ruin, which is able to give you extra damage for your concentric life, but this is just for your fourth job. Finally, there's one called Secret Game, which is amazing for PvE content like Echoing Corridor. If you get the third line, you're able to stay in permanent stealth even when you're attacking. This is pretty insane, and I know a lot of people that have it are able to abuse it in Echoing Corridor. Next we have Attributes. Focus on Penetration, Armor Breaking, Destruction, Assault, Vitality, Dexterity, Agility, and HP Defense. Next are Guild Prayers and Blessings. For Guild Prayers, focus on HP and Attack. For Guild Blessing, your attack card should go towards Penetration first, then ignore defense, and then finally attack. I used to be a Stellar Hunter main, so I invested in critical damage. Do not invest in that if you're a dorm. That does not affect the critical damage from Lunatic Ground Pound or Savage Soul. If you do this, you'll be very sad. For defense cards, focus on max HP first. Then I worked on magic defense percentage, damage reduction, and then defense percentage. For elemental cards, I just focus on the damage ones. In particular, I found Holy Damage is the most useful because there's a ton of monsters that are weak to Holy Damage. If a priest gives you a Spiro, you can do a ton of damage to these monsters. For the rest of the elements, just choose whichever one you use the most when you use Elemental Converters. For guild facilities, make sure you're in one that has a level 9 sewing machine. Then, you could use Mithril Reinforcement to give you more HP on your armor, garment, boots, and offhand. This is a great way to get thousands of more HP. Next are Deposits. Work on your Adventure Handbook to unlock as many HP and attack giving deposits as possible. I highly recommend you get a house because you'll be able to get a ton of unlocks and deposits that are quite cheap. These are the bonuses I get from my Adventure Handbook. Next is the Oracle Mirror System that came in Episode 7. You'll need to do Echoing Corridor in order to get these bonuses. The two extractions that I did was the Plus 10 Claw and the Plus 10 Build. I think these are the best ones. The first one I did was the Claw because you get incredible value. You can get up to 10% attack if you have a plus 10 Claw. This is great value when you compare things like trying to get a plus 12 Rune Boots for an extra 2% more attack, which would cost you over 100 million zenny. The plus 10 Claw costs about 40 to 50 million zenny. Next I got the plus 10 Bill, which costs about 45 million zenny. I think this is great because you could potentially deal an extra 10% damage to minis and MVPs. For my rerolls for each of these, I got 8 as the maximum. If you enjoyed this video, like, comment, and subscribe.